friends. Welcome to week three of our summer reading program. My name is Miss Emily. I work at the Mooresville Public Library in Mooresville, Indiana, and welcome you to Imagine Your Story, our summer reading theme this year. So in week three, we are talking about um, Jack and the Beanstalk. So we're planting our magic beans in our family program, and we're talking about all kinds of Jack stories, stories about giants, stories about um, Jack and the Beanstalk for our um, book list today. So uh, we're going to start, we're going to go from picture books all the way up to teen books. There will be um, notes in the description so you can skip ahead to whichever age group you'd like to if you don't want to listen to the whole thing. But uh, here we go. Um, so the first book I like to share, I love the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, but uh, I always love to hear stories that kind of take the traditional story and think about it in a different way. So this very first one thinks about Jack and the Beanstalk from this perspective of the giant. So this is The Giant and the Beanstalk by Diane Stanley. So for a giant, Otto is embarrassingly polite. While all the other giants are studying, cursing, growling, and stomping, Otto just wants to play with his pet hen, Clara. Then one terrible day, a wily human named Jack climbs up a magic beanstalk and steals her away. Knowing only the thief's name, Otto must find Clara and rescue her from the land of fairy tales and nursery rhymes. The only problem is there seem to be an awful lot of Jacks down there. So that is the giant and the beanstalk, and there are a lot of Jacks uh, in our fairy tale stories and in... Uh, traditional stories. My next picture book that I really love, and I'm sharing this in story time, but I want to also share it with you, Clever Jack Takes the Cake. So this is um, a Jack story that is a newer story. It's not an old story, but it takes that idea of the Jack character. So what would you do if you were invited to the princess's 10th birthday party, but you didn't have any money for a gift? Well, Clever Jack decides to bake the princess a cake. Now, he just has to get it to the castle in one piece. What could possibly go wrong? I'll tell you, lots of things go wrong in this book. It's very clever and very fun. Clever Jack Takes the Cake. It's by Candace Fleming and by G. Uh, G. Brian Carras did the illustrations. Our last picture book today is Kate and the Beanstalk. So what might the Jack and the Beanstalk story look like if uh, a girl was the Jack character, Kate, instead of Jack? So uh, in this version of that classic tale, a girl climbs to the top of a giant beanstalk where she uses her quick wits to out outsmart a giant and make her and her mother's fortune. And this is written by Mary Pope Osborne and illustrated by Giselle Potter. If you recognize the, the name Mary Pope Osborne, she's the same lady who writes the Magic Treehouse books. So if you like that, you might also enjoy those. Moving onwards to uh, chapter books, a classic giant tale is by Roald Dahl, the BFG. Kid snatched from her orphanage by a BFG, a big friendly giant, uh, who spends his life blowing happy dreams to children. Sophie concocts with him a plan to save the world from nine other awful man gobbling cannibal giants. Next, I'd like to tell you about a book. Uh, that is checked out right now. This is called Odd and the Frost Giants. It's by Neil Gaiman and uh, illustrated by Brett Helquist. Uh, Neil Gaiman uh, has written a lot about Norse mythology and this is kind of uh, part of that. So Odd, a young Viking boy, is left fatherless following a raid. In his icy ancient world, there is no mercy for an unlucky soul with a crushed foot and no one to protect him. Fleeing into the woods, Odd stumbles upon and releases a trapped bear. And then Odd's destiny begins to change. 
An eagle, the bear, and a fox that Odd encounters are Norse gods trapped in animal form by the evil frost giant who has conquered Asgard, the city of the gods. Now our hero must reclaim Thor's hammer, outwit the frost giants, and release those gods. And that is an exciting one, Odd and the Frost Giants by Neil Gaiman and illustrated by Brett Helquist. I also love a chapter book that has illustrations. I really enjoy that. Uh, my next story, chapter book, is uh, not really a fairy tale. This one is called Tall Story. This is by Candy Gourlay. And this is um, about Andy. Andy is short. She wishes she could play on the school basketball team. She wants her own bedroom, but most of all, she wishes for her long lost half brother, Bernardo, and she wishes he could come and live with her in London. Then her biggest wish comes true and she's minutes away from becoming Bernardo's little sister. But as she waits for him to arrive from the Philippines, she hopes he'll turn out to be tall or just as crazy as she is about basketball. But when he finally does arrive, he is tall all right. Eight feet tall, in fact. He's plagued by a condition called gigantism and troubled by secrets that he believes led to his phenomenal growth. In this novel, packed with quirkiness and humor, Gourlay explores a touching sibling relationship and the clash of two very different cultures. So this is about an actual person who is taller than most people. Tall story. Kind of like a tall tale, but more realistic. All right, if you like graphic novels, I've got several graphic novels that you might enjoy. The first one is called How to Spot a Sasquatch. That's the, the term for Bigfoot. And this one is written by Jay Torres and illustrated by Aureli Grand. And this one is about um, Jay. On a camping trip with the Junior Rangers, Jay feels like the odd one out. He's determined to get a photo of Bigfoot, but none of his friends believe Bigfoot exists. If there's no such thing, why is there a giant footprint? And who is stealing all of the scouts' snacks? How to spot a Sasquatch. You may also enjoy Hilda and the Troll. And this is the beginning of a graphic novel series. Uh, the Hilda series, um, which has also been made into a Netflix series. So uh, you may have known Hilda from there, but she's got graphic novels as well as um, chapter books. But in Hilda and the Troll, uh, while on an expedition to illustrate the magical creatures of the mountains around her home, Hilda spots a mountain troll. As the blue-haired explorer sits and sketches, she slowly starts to nod off. By the time she wakes up, the troll has totally disappeared and, even worse, Hilda is lost in a snowstorm. On her way home, Hilda befriends a lonely wooden man and narrowly avoids getting squashed by a lost giant. So that is Hilda and the Troll. This is by Luke Pearson. So that one is a fun graphic novel if you're into that. And getting back to Jack, stories, Jack and the Beanstalk stories. There, my next graphic novel is Mighty Jack by Ben Hatke. Uh, Jack dreads summer because his single mother has to work and leaves him at home with his boring little sister who is autistic. She doesn't talk at all, ever. But one day while they're at a flea market, she does talk. She tells Jack to trade their mother's car for a box of mysterious seeds. And it turns out to be the best mistake Jack has ever made. And so this is the first in a series of Jack graphic novels. Uh, ben Hatke has also done the Zeta the Space Girl graphic novels. So if you've read those, you may also enjoy these. And there's even a crossover book where Jack and Zeta meet each other. Our next graphic novel is called Cardboard. And this is about a gigantic cardboard man. This is by Doug Tenapple. Cam's down and out father gives him a cardboard box for his birthday and he knows it's the worst present ever. So to make the best of a bad situation, they bend the cardboard into a man and to their astonishment, it comes magically to life. 
but the neighborhood bully, Marcus, wraps the powerful cardboard into his own evil creations that threaten to destroy them all. If you've ever made a cardboard fort, this is a good book for you. It's really fun. Moving on to our teen books, I have another book about someone who is very tall. This one is called XL. This is by Scott Brown. On his 16th birthday, Will is just shy of five feet, and he is bitterly resigned to being tiny forever. His only comforts are his best friend and stepbrother, Drew, who's 6'3", and their pal, pal Monica, who's 5'10", a girl Will's been quietly pining for since fifth grade. Everyone else literally overlooks him. That is, until things take an unexpected turn and he starts to grow, and grow fast astonishingly fast. For the first time, Will's happy with his stature. People see him differently. More importantly, he sees himself differently. But the highest heights come with some low lows, and Will has to figure out what to do with himself, and all of his new himself that he never expected to have. So that is XL by Scott Brown. Next is a fun one that uh, mixes that fantasy and reality. Attack of the 50-Foot Wallflower by Christian McKay Heidecker. Phoebe, 15, the daughter of a famous mother and an unearthly father, suddenly begins experiencing radical changes as she enters one scene after another from 1950s and 60s science fiction movies. This unique book, challenges perceived notions of beauty, identity, and what it means to be a monster. Attack of the 50-Foot Wallflower. And lastly, for teen books, we have a, an anthology called Happily Ever After. And this is a uh, pretty large book, but there are short stories uh, by really some great authors. So uh, Neil Gaiman, who we talked about before with Odd and the Frost Giants, has done one. Gregory Maguire, who wrote Wicked. Holly Black did the, um, the Coldest Girl in Cold Town books. Uh, Charles DeLint is a famous uh, fantasy author. Garth Nix did the Sabriel series. So lots and lots of really great um, YA and adult authors who have taken familiar um, fairy tale stories and reimagine them. So even though it looks like a pretty thick book, you could, if you wanted to, just read um, two or three of the, the stories in there and still get the, the good experience. All right, that's it for fiction. Now for nonfiction, I have lots of different options. We're going to do kind of rapid fire. Um, so Jack and the Beanstalk is all about planting a magic bean and getting a, a huge beanstalk. So I've got a couple of books about seeds. Flip, float, fly, seeds on the move. So that's an interesting one about how seeds get planted. If you want to talk about giant plants, the giant flower, the sunflower, uh, seed to sunflower takes you through their life cycle. Or if you want to get even bigger, the giant sequoia tree. So you could read more about the giant sequoia tree. What about animals? You could look at Owen and Mzee, a true story of a remarkable friendship between a giant tortoise and a baby hippopotamus. Lots of cute photographs in this one. You could learn about even bigger animals like the elephant. This one's by Jenny Desmond all about elephants. Maybe you're into scarier animals like giant shark, megalodon, a prehistoric super predator. How about T-Rex? T-Rex is a, a famous giant. How tall was a T-Rex? There's lots of dinosaur books at the library if you're interested in dinosaurs of all kinds. Those were all animals that are real. How about like we had before the Sasquatch? This is a um, nonfiction title, In Search of Sasquatch, so all about mankind's obsession with this uh, legendary creature, Bigfoot. 
Or you could read about the giant and how he humbugged America. This is about a big scam that someone buried a fake giant in their yard and then decided to um, to scam all the people who thought it was real. Uh, we talked about people who have um, a, a gene that causes them to grow bigger than most humans called gigantism. This is another book about that, uh, a true story, The Giant of Seville, a tall tale based on a true story by Dan Andreessen. Interesting uh, look at a historical figure who had gigantism. Or you might enjoy some tall tales. So here are a, a, a selection of American tall tales. Uh, this one is put together by Mary Pope Osborne. We heard her name before. Um, and illustrated by Michael McCurdy. Of course, um, Paul Bunyan is the most famous American tall tale giant who had the gigantic ox blue, and he was a, uh, a woodcutter out in the woods. So that is a um, lot of books really quickly. Uh, if you're interested in checking any of those out, you can uh, check out our list for our fantastic reads for this week. It has all of the books that I talked about today, plus more. Uh, if you'd like some ideas of what to read uh, about giants and Jack and the Beanstalk and growing things, all kinds of good topics there. So have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next week with Miss Megan. Enjoy your reading, keep going at it, mark your time and get some prizes at the library. Goodbye.